investors increasingly turning to alternative investments to maximize returns from the private markets, given the current uh, high rate environment. I want to bring in Mark Lipschultz. Uh, he's the co-chief investment officer of Blue Owl Capital. It's an alternative asset firm and a leading player in the private capital space with $157 billion in assets under management. It's very good to see you. Thank you. Good to be here. Um, what do you make of this crazy market? What, and what do you, I mean, we were talking about Israel and the Middle East and everything that's happening, but um, more broadly, where do you think we actually really are? Look, it's a volatile world. I mean, that is, that is the baseline today. I was just thinking about the comments, Joe, you were making about the rise and fall of the markets and the rise again. Interest rates, 4.57, about one and a half, two years ago. I mean, all that volatility actually is what I think makes alternatives work. The truth of the matter is alternatives are built to take a longer view. Alternatives have for decades now delivered great results. Right. And that's, you know, I, I think Except that in, is, a, in, a, in a very uh, high interest rate environment, tough to buy stuff and make it make sense. Well, that's where the markets have to work, right? At the end of the day, it's all about pricing, all about resetting pricing right. and getting buyers and sellers back together. That takes time. There's no doubt about okay, that. Okay, but in terms of where we are right now and how much it's going to cost you to lever, to, to lever the portfolio, which is what we're talking about, it's a, it's a much more expensive market. For sure. Look, we're, our largest not, business is lending right. money to private equity. In fact, really, our whole business at, at Blue Owl is to be a capital market solution, a capital right. provider to the private equity ecosystem at but large. But we've seen the private equity system at, at large, in terms of just transaction volume, come down materially over the past year, year and a half. Dramatically. Okay, so down what does that say? Does that say that they're the smart money and they know that, the, that, that, that multiples are coming down? Does that say that they can't afford it? Is that, is that say that... The interest rate is too high. What, what, does that, what does that speak to? Well, whether it, well, here's, certainly it tells us that there was a pretty euphoric and active period in 2021, maybe, right. maybe too active. So, okay, so what's compared gonna, to what? And, we, and so but, what's going to happen? We should talk about in a moment. What's going to happen to those deals? But in terms of today, there's no doubt activity levels have come down. And you've got to get part of it is just getting buyers and seller expectations together. Part of it is the opacity of the world we're in, the geopolitical uncertainty today. Married with interest rate uncertainty, married with market uncertainty. Look, these are very long-term decisions. So the good news is private markets, private equity, chief among it, can look through a lot of short-term uncertainty. But this is you know, perhaps more than uncertainty. This is true opacity. So I think it will take time for the volumes to return. But the strength of the private market is that it can look past today, past tomorrow, out a couple of years, and look for returns that are based on the fundamental opportunities within the markets. Could it be a problem that <laughs> today we're at 33 trillion? If we look out a couple of years through the opacity, we're going to be at 40 trillion. It's not going away. I mean, are you sure we return to some positive, uh, a positive environment for, for financial assets, or are we just? I mean, we're in, we're in a pickle for a while. Well, look, in, in, in due candor and, and tending you know, our garden, so to speak, at Blue Owl, we provide capital solutions to the private equity industry. And our single largest business is providing senior secured floating rate debt. So this, these higher rates today have been a tremendous benefit to our LPs. And as Blue Owl is a firm... We're a fee-based business. We don't have carry. So I, I you know, okay, can't so it's okay. put out there it's that okay we have a bit of a different out, business. Well, I, the you know, I, do, I, I, I do still have a business to tend to. But for the markets at large, look, it's a more challenging environment. There's no doubt about that. Right. That's true. That's what do you make of the argument that you, are, you would be considered part of the shadow banking system as a lender in the, in the context of what you do? And that the, the banks, the Jamie Dimons of the world, who have, been, who have said for a long time now, that this world needs to be regulated a lot more to match what the banks uh, have in terms of their regulation. So the term shadow bank, which I understand has been invented right. by you know, some antagonists of the business. Look, let's take a step back and really understand what we do. We collect pools of long dated capital right. and we make long term loans and our balance sheet is unlevered and disconnected from other investors. So who do we have? We have Sovereign wealth funds, we have pension funds, we have endowments, we have wealthy individuals, but they commit their capital for the long term. In fact, most of our capital, 93% of Blue Owl's capital, is permanent capital. It stays with us. It doesn't cycle. It doesn't go away. And so, as a result, we can actually make those long-term loans 
as a long-term principal, a counterparty, right. the way banks were 30 years ago. Today, remember, and you know this well, yeah. for 30 years, banks have been getting out of the business of making these loans. Right. Banks don't lend money to the companies we lend money to. What we do, where we do compete, if you will, is we're offering a long-term solution to be their long-term partner, right. and the banks are saying, look, we want to be an intermediary and go help you right. find a long-term partner. We're really not in the same what is your What is your bet on rates as you look out over the next year, year and a half? Well, my bet is to be in the floating rate business so I don't have to decide. It's going to be challenging. I will say this, that in the scheme of things, and I don't pretend to know where rates are going, but I will say this. Inflation is a sticky problem. Inflation is challenging. I will say for the last year when people say, oh, we're about to turn over, rates are about to start coming down, that didn't make sense to us sitting where we sit. It still doesn't we make have, sense. It, does, it still doesn't make sense yet. We're still going to be fighting this fight. Inflation is tough once it's embedded. Once people are used to increasing prices, and used to having wages rise, I mean, those are good things nominally, but when taken together, it continues to make inflation a persistent animal. So I think high rates for longer are likely the case. Hmm. I mean, it, you remind me a little bit of, of a, an airline that, that, that hedges fuel costs. They, they do, you know, they never make any money from it, but they don't lose money. I mean, there, there would be times where you shouldn't be floating. You should have, have, have fixed rates, right? Well, our role... You just won't do it because you want to be flexible either way. Well, uh, yeah, exactly. Our role is to be able to sit here today and have this conversation. I'm sure none of us say, oh, look, I know where rates are going to be, or I have an extraordinarily high level of conviction. <laughs> so my investors, yeah. our investors, are going to do well if rates are up. And, and yes, their, their yeah. returns will come down if rates come down, but that also right. means inflation has come down. So right. We're delivering a durable return. So you think it's volatile? I mean, do you think it's Yeah, I think, I think uncertainty is the, the call of the day. How, is, how could it not be? Look at the geopolitical uncertainty you were all just talking about. Yeah. Look at the interest rate conversation we're having. Think about where the markets are. It is a little hard to connect market prices today with that level of uncertainty, which right. is itself a type of uncertainty. This day, I'm still scarred from 19, the early 80s where there was 13% triple tax-free munis. None of the clients would buy those. When they all wanted floating rate, and they floated right down with that. I mean, that could have been the trade of They would never have to do anything else, ever. <laughs> Listen, with hindsight, for sure, right. there are moments where we know there's assets we don't want to buy. So where you don't want say, to be floating, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be in a floating rate mortgage right now, either. <laughs> well, there you have it. But, yeah. but to be a floating rate provider and to right. deliver floating that to your institutional that's investors, one thing you don't have to worry. One thing you don't have to exactly. worry. Exactly.